Mr. Sheen, thank you uh, for convening our hearing. Director Ray, welcome back to this Commerce Justice Science Subcommittee. I appreciated your time, as I indicated just a moment ago, and your remarks at the University of Kansas this past April at the annual FBI and KU Cybersecurity Conference. Uh, the quality of the speakers and the panel suggest to me that this will become a premier annual cyber event, and I hope you will continue to join us. We'll try to do it during basketball season, if you prefer. The ability of our nation in both government and private sector to deter and neutralize cyber attacks from having their intended effect is essential to our national security and to our economy. These new challenges and dangers require a capable, qualified, and well-trained workforce to combat the threats. In addition to that, I want to discuss national security crisis at the southern border. President Biden just signed an executive order to limit claims of asylum for those entering our country. While action by the President is needed, I'm doubtful that this ex executive order will make the necessary changes to ensure an operational control of our border and that we know who, why, and where people are crossing into our country. Last month, it was reported that a suspected member of ISIS had been freely living in the United States after illegally crossing the southern border. Nonetheless, it would take more than two years before that person was arrested on April the 17th. In another case, an individual on the terrorist watch list was similarly released by the Border Patrol after crossing the southern border. I recognize that these cases most directly implicate failures at DHS, but the FBI also plays a major role in national security screening and facilitating the sharing of information across our government. Our world and our country have become more dangerous. Our adversaries are coordinating with the intention of doing harm to the U.S., our allies, and our partners. The conflicts overseas present clear threats here at home. As Russia wages its illegal and unjust invasion of Ukraine, it's widely reported that Moscow is engaged in asymmetric activities such as sabotage in Western Europe. I would like you to address if we are seeing signs of that in our own country. The ongoing war in Gaza has the potential to inspire terrorists around the globe. We cannot be complacent about in believing in America will be immune, immune, and Jewish Americans should not have to live in fear. And the Chinese regime continues its efforts to steal intellectual property, threaten uh, critical infrastructure, and on this anniversary of Tiananmen Square, has established police stations in the U.S. to harass Chinese dissent, dissidents who find freedom in our country. You recently said, Director, the PRC has made it clear that it considers every sector that makes our society run fair game. It's clear the conflicts abroad present real challenges at home. Compounding those challenges are distinct vulnerabilities on our borders, our means of communication, and our technology systems. Uh, Director, you have a wide array of challenges in front of you and the FBI. Uh, it seems uh, almost insurmountable, the things that we face today. I look forward to hearing from you how our budget can help better support the work the FBI does to mitigate these growing threats, address the crisis at our southern border, and ultimately keep Americans safe. Thank you and the people who work at the FBI for your efforts in that regard, and I thank you also for being here today.